Hey all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we are going to be doing some more rotation free response questions, and so let's take a look at this. Uh, as usual, I suggest you pause the video, attempt to do the problem on your own, and then come back um, and keep watching the video after um, you've attempted the problem. So a pulley of radius R1 and rotational inertia I1 is mounted on an axle with negligible friction. A light cord is passing over the pulley, has two um, has two blocks of mass M attached to either end as shown above. Assume the cord does not slip on the pulley. Determine the answers to part A and B in terms of M, R1, I, 1, and constants. Determine the tension T in the cord. Um, let's see. So these masses are all the same, right? So uh, it's not rotating. Okay. Um, let's see. It should be easy. Um, the tension on the cord. So I'm going to draw a box around this one and do a free body diagram on this. And that'll help me get the torque, uh, the, the tension. I have T going up and I have 2mg pulling down on this. And because this thing isn't falling or accelerating, because it, it should be balanced, it, it isn't accelerating, um, these forces have to be equal to each other. So I have um, for A, T is equal to 2mg, right? B. One block is now removed from the right and hung on the left. Wait. Okay. When the system is released from rest, the three blocks on the left accelerate downward with the acceleration g over 3. Determine the following. The tension T3 in the section cord is the point of three blocks on the left. T1, the section of cord supporting a single block on the right, and the rotational inertia of the pulley. Okay. So the three blocks on the left look like this. They have I'm just gonna put them all together. They have 3 mg going down, and they have uh, T3 pulling up. Because T3 is a section of cord. Um, the net force, but it's gonna accelerate downward at A is equal to G over 3. So the net force on this downward is 3mg minus t3 that's equal to ma what's the m 3m times a which is g over 3 All right those threes cancel so it's just equal to mg so t3 is equal to 3mg minus yeah, bring the t3 over bring that over there minus mg that's equal to 2mg okay so that's I'll write that as T3 is equal to that. Okay. What about this thing here? Um, this block has uh, T1 pulling up and just mg pulling down, a single mg. And I know it's accelerating upward, right? Because if this whole thing is accelerating, they all got to move together. G over 3. So his net force upward is T1 minus mg, and that's equal to uh, the mass of the object. It's equal to ma, right? So T1 is equal to mg plus mg over 3. That's one third mg, and this is really four thirds mg. Okay. Now, for this guy, we got to think about all the torques acting on him, all the, the free body diagram on this guy. He has T3 pulling down here, and he also has T1 pulling down like this. Okay. Now, he technically has uh, a couple of other forces, force of gravity and the uh, some normal force from this, um, this center that's keeping it held up. But... Um, these forces don't apply any torque. They won't affect the rotation of the system because they're being applied at the point of rotation. Okay. Whereas these are being applied here and here. Okay. So um, to calculate the net torque, remember it's equal to I alpha, right? So I can solve for I. I it's I1 by, by solving this. I1 is equal to the net torque over alpha. 
Now let's look at what the net torque would be. Well, this thing is causing it to rotate. T3 is causing it to rotate this way. We'll call this way uh, counterclockwise. We'll say that's positive. And T1 is causing it to rotate um, clockwise, which is negative. So the torque from T3 is positive, whereas the torque from T1 is negative because I've assigned a direction being positive in the counterclockwise and negative in the kind of like when you assign direction in linear acceleration, you got to say which way is positive, which way is negative, like up's positive, down's negative. Here you have to establish which way the rotation is. I'm going to say rotation is positive in this way. And I always do it because um, that's the direction everything is moving. All right. If, if you know which way is positive, which way is actually moving, I tend to just make that positive, although you could make it negative. So that means T3 is applying a positive torque. What I need to multiply by its R. And so the distance that it's applying this force is R away. And this is already at a right angle. So his torque there is just T3 times R. Now I have to subtract. This is applying a negative torque because it's causing it to, it's, this force from T1 is wanting it to rotate it in the negative direction. So that's why I subtract that torque. It's T1, and it's also being applied at a distance r away. Divided by alpha. Now, alpha is equal to, um, well, the relationship is A is equal to alpha r. This is the relationship between linear acceleration and the angular acceleration of this object. The linear acceleration being the acceleration at the end here. And I know that linear acceleration has to be g over 3 because it's rotating at the same. It, this this rotation acceleration has to be the same as this acceleration as this acceleration downward, right? Like everything has to move together. So I know that that's g over 3 is equal to alpha r. So that tells me alpha is equal to um, g over 3 r. And so I can plug that into here. I can also plug in, I know what t3 and t1 are. So I have... 2 mg r minus 4 thirds mg r divided by g over 3 r. Okay. Now, um, the top, 2 is 6 over 3. 6 over 3 minus 4 over 3 is 2 thirds mg r. And then I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal here because dividing by a fraction. Multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so this 3 cancels with that 3. This g cancels with that g. And I get um, 2m r squared. Okay, cool. So that's b. That's t1, t3, and uh, i1. C, the blocks are now removed and the cord is tied in a loop, which is passed around the, the original pulley. Uh, this is i1. Wait, no, this is the original pulley? Oh, I'm supposed to put R1 here, FYI. This is R1, whatever. Um, and the second pull is a radius 2. Okay, so this is the original one, same one as up here, and this is the second one. Uh, 2 R1 and rotational inertia 16 I1. The axis of the original pulley is attached to a motor that rotates at angular speed omega. So this is rotating at an angular speed omega, which causes the larger pulley to rotate. The loop does not slip on the pulleys. Determine the following in terms of I1, R1, omega 1, the angular speed omega 2 of the larger pulley. Okay, so similar to what was he said here, the angular, like the velocity of this rope here, this velocity has to be same, has to be the same between these two. Like whatever the tangential velocity is here has to be the same here. Otherwise, like one part of the rope would be moving faster, but they're all moving together because it's one rope. So the velo tangential velocity here is equal to, the relationship is equal to r1 omega 1, okay? r1, the radius of this disk or this pulley times um, its angular velocity. But we know it has to be the same here. His radius is 2r1 and omega 2. So then I can say omega 2 is equal to, the r1s cancel if I divide that, is equal to 2 omega 1. Oh, sorry, 1 half omega 1. Which should make sense to you. This pulley should rotate at half the speed that this one. This has got to rotate faster to keep up with this one. Because when this thing turns, it turns a lot more rope. 
Okay, the angular momentum of the larger pulley. Okay, angular momentum is given by the equation L is equal to I omega. Well, we know what his I is. It's 16 I1. And his omega is omega 2. And that's 1 half omega 1. That's equal to 8 I1 omega 1. The total kinetic energy of the system. Um, the kinetic energy is the rotational energy in this case. So uh, it's always 1 half I omega squared. So I have to add the rotational energy of this guy and this guy because they're both turning. The first guy has a rotational inertia I1. And his omega is omega 1 squared plus 1 half. The rotational inertia of this guy is 16 I1. And his omega is 1 half omega 1 squared. So this is uh, 1 half I1 omega 1 squared plus 1 half. Uh, so, so this would be 1 fourth, 1 eighth. So all of that would make this 2. This is 1 half. So 2 plus 1 half uh, is 5 halves I1 omega 1 squared. Okay. And that's that. All right. Hope you guys found that helpful. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content and see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.